Okay. Oh, whoops. I just hit record. <laughs> it's all right. It's better than not hitting record. Never hitting record. For sure. Are you recording? I suppose we can go from there. You're listening to That Gets My Goat. You should know better. Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield, and this is The Force Awaken. <laughs> that was so dramatic. <laughs> really impressive. If only you'd said a word. Mm. Yeah, we're here with uh, part two of our exhaustive review of The Force Awakens. And when I say exhaustive, basically you're just going to be exhausted because we droned on and on. It's not like it covers everything. No, but, but we've got such a short time to talk about episode seven compared to all the other Star Wars movies. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. We've, all, we've got less than a year before Rogue One comes out. And then after Rogue One comes out, Marshall told me it's only five months before the episode eight. And that, oh, that, that seems like it's gotta be wrong. It's such a short time. But Plus, then, is it gonna be like 18 months before the next one? No, I think then it's going to be just a year, same weekend every year. They're going to stick with... Uh, May, I believe, yeah. Uh, Memorial Day from there on out? I believe so. This makes sense. They're going to try and muscle Marvel out of its spot. Oh, wait, they're the same people. They're mm. not, though. Yeah, but they're not going to fight over release dates. But my guess is Marvel gets like the first weekend in May and Star Wars gets the last weekend in May. Something. something like that, yeah. Pretty soon, they're going to all be the same company because Disney will own DC and they'll own everything else. They'll own My Little Pony. I mean, when My Little Pony falls, there's really nothing left. That's right. We all fall when My Little Pony falls. <laughs> so, this is our second episode, or technically our third, about <laughs> the, sh the movie, the new movie, and... I can't remember if we wanted to talk about negative things or we wanted to talk about positive things. I was going to suggest we talk positive things first and negative things in the next episode. Okay, that's fair. Uh, and we'll do our best to keep the peanut butter away from the chocolate so that, you know, it doesn't get ruined. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's possible that we'll throw a little of... I'm sure a little of each will make their way into the other one but anyways what well wait 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 sorry I, between episodes you told me about an internet meme that you saw on facebook and i thought let's start with that okay because i i don't think i ever saw that uh -huh. but i also tried to stay away from facebook plus i had no free time to waste on facebook around the time this movie came out so go okay so well the internet i mean you were talking in our last episode that you Avoided it on purpose so that you didn't get any spoilers, but some people, but th there wasn't any real reason to because nobody really spoiled it. They just said, hey, I saw it and I liked it. And I no spoilers here, but if you want to talk in the comments, spoiler alert, comments, we can talk about it. That I was my experience. Yes, was that was your same? experience. And I, I even was saying that I saw uh, it taken a little further where somebody had made up a little image. That was, you know, the image of the poster or whatever. And it said, I saw it and I loved it. You can talk about it with me. Somebody had posted that. And that, that I saw that one actually the day that I went to see it. And a bunch of people just reposted that thing? I assume so. I mean, I, I only saw it once. but easier than typing, I saw it and I loved it. <laughs> Pretty much, it is. I mean, you see somebody else put that, then you can just hit share, and you're done. Holy cow, that's lazy, though. But, but anyway, continue. It's fancier. It's got a neat picture. It does, yes. So there's that. But, but yeah, that it's funny because leading up to seeing the movie, that's all I ever heard. That's the only thing I heard was I saw it and I loved it. I didn't hear a single person say, yeah, you know what? I saw it and I thought it was a piece of trash. Or I saw it and I was underwhelmed or anything. It was all, I, I loved it. Oh my gosh. Was 
the comments that I saw from everybody. So, so did you, well, but you were on vacation, but did you purposely stay away from Facebook during that period for fear of spoilers? I did a little bit. Yeah, I was, I, sometimes I would go on, but I would, I was tiptoeing basically, you know, I was so scared to step on something. I was really careful and I didn't look on Facebook that much. I mean, I, on vacation, we were doing other things because we were there to do other things. Despite the fact that my stupid kids only wanted to sit in their little room and watch their phones on the Wi-Fi. You know, I I never had a problem with Doctor Who before. Uh, it's never been my thing, but I never had a, an issue with it. But my daughters decided that they were going to do a Doctor Who marathon or whatever and they started there's eight seasons of doctor who on netflix and they started at season one and just started watching them constantly and we would be like hey let's go to the beach and they're like nah, can i just stay home and I, I i wanted to strangle them i wanted to kill these kids because they could watch doctor who at anywhere anytime at the house you can never go to the beach at the house it's hundreds of miles away. But they wanted to not go to the beach so they could sit and watch fucking Doctor Who. I was really irritated. But anyways, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the good things. Okay. <laughs> and I've totally lost track of what I was saying. So I'm going to turn the reins over to you. No, I had asked you if you also had stayed away from Facebook. And uh, okay. if your experience had been that people were decent enough to not spoil the movie for you and definitely if that was the case and i don't know what it is it's like you know it's like the every single internet poster was visited by three spirits the night before <laughs> because it would be so easy to say you know two and a half hours and luke doesn't say a goddamn thing you know <laughs> things like that where if the second you heard that you'd know it was true oh okay you know what i'm saying here's the one the one spoiler, and it's not really a spoiler, but it is a spoiler. The one spoiler that I saw. Somebody posted a article from, like, I don't know, Entertainment Weekly or whatever, where it was talking about Star Wars. Oh, Star Wars did so great. And all the cast are signed to return through all three movies. They'll all be back for the next movie. And... The person's comment on that was, no, they won't. Okay, but that, what does that spoil for you? That Somebody's going to die. Yeah, it doesn't spoil it. Like I said, it wasn't really a spoiler, but it sort of was. I, I You could say that about Stormtrooper number six isn't coming back, but of course they're not saying it about that. Somebody major is going to die. So I did get that one spoiler. Okay. The Force probably told you who it was going to be, right? No, I, the Force hadn't awakened in me yet. Okay. So, I had no idea. And I didn't want to know, and I mean, I don't know. No, I mean, of course you didn't want to know. I they're, they're... tried to push it from my mind and not explore it. It was like, you know, you have a sharp, like, ridge on your tooth or something, and you just have to force you, yourself not to stick your tongue there until it's cut. And that's kind of what I did. I just threw force of will i didn't let my mind go there one thing that you and i have done in the weeks since the movie came out is we've gone onto youtube and watched people's reviews and their speculations and they're all your star wars questions answered and <laughs> here's the things that i didn't like and here's who i would like to have sexual intercourse with someday those kind of posts but i discovered that there were tons of this is what we know about force awakens videos that had been posted in the days leading up to it, the months leading up to it, that were just riddled with potential spoilers. And so that stuff was out there. I guess you could have found out things that ruined the movie or ruined big parts of the movie if you had wanted to. But yeah, just in the mainstream, I didn't have anybody say, oh, you know what? I heard that so-and-so gets killed this way. And I was like, why, why would you tell me that? You're an asshole. I'm We've all had people say that kind of stuff because you get a rise, I guess, as being a troll. Mm -hmm. But there weren't a lot of Star Wars trolls when those... Yeah, it's because trolls are a fantasy thing, and this is more sci-fi. Okay. <laughs> I think the nerds out there would disagree with you, but... Okay, so, so that's cool. 
that a lot of stuff uh, was not spoiled. This is the positive one, right? Yeah, that's what we're hoping for. We're going for positives. Well, uh, okay, then let, then let's think about the look of the movie. I, I felt like J.J. Abrams went out of his way to make this look like Star Wars. That, you know, just the visual language was so similar in many shots and aspects and just the, that he was trying to make it look not only like Star Wars, but, but especially like that first film, the 1977 film. And I really appreciated that. There were times in the prequels where maybe things were just so clean and crisp and clear and artificial that it didn't feel like Star Wars. It didn't feel like anything. It felt like, I don't know, cartoon in some points. It was like friggin' Mary Poppins or something when they jumped into the the sidewalk chalk painting and all the, the only person that's actually real is Dick Van Dyke. And the whole rest of the thing was just a cartoon is what the, those ones ended up being like at some point like when he goes when dick van dyke world. fights general grievous i i did like that yeah when when dick van dyke went to the clone world and met the long tall necked that was when it was particularly cartoonish but anyways this is the positive aspect of star wars so we're going to steer clear of prequels yes yeah, so he did definitely make things look and and i think it was probably easier than for the prequels because you just kind of take what they had and drag it out 30 years. How much are things going to change? Are things going to go away? What, you know, what's the difference? And honestly, that was some of the stuff that was cool about the prequels, is when you got to go backwards in time and see, oh, here's like a beginnings of a Star Destroyer, and here's, oh, this ship opens the wings out now, kind of like an X-Wing, and, you know, you, you got to see that kind of stuff, which was, was kind of fun if it wasn't thrown into a pit of poop. Um, but yeah, it, it did very much look alike. They, they still had similar uniforms. You know, the X-Wing pilots are still wearing their little orange jumpsuits, etc. Well, yeah, like all of the Imperial stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the First Order stuff, it felt like the same sets, you know, like, like they were shooting in the same place where the Millennium Falcon had been captured on the Death Star, you know, or, you know, Darth Vader's executor was shot in the exact same place where uh, General Hux is having his uh, conversation and all that, you know. The, and, the, yeah, and all their outfits, too, like the Space Nazi outfits that they were wearing. It looked, yeah, I mean, G G his name was General Hux. Does that bother you? Well, it's just not awesome, but it's not, I didn't know. I mean, uh -oh. for some reason that feels like it's short for Huxley. That's like what his friends call me. Uh, my friends call me Hux, but you, you're not my friend. You call me Huxley. Anyways, um, <laughs> okay, let's put a pin in that part and we'll talk about that in the negative. Um, but aspect. yeah, like he had that exact same outfit with the hat and the whole, the whole bit. He looked just like the guys that Darth Vader choked to death over and over again in Empire Strikes Back. Well, but my point is that that was by design. It yeah. wanted to look familiar. It wanted to feel familiar. The score brought back as many old themes or moments uh, as it could i think again just for familiarity's sake in a nice way it's just like every time and again we boy we have harped on this i think in 2015 we talked about this every other episode but it's like music does that it's a shorthand <laughs> it's a shortcut to emotion and hearing that leia Funny that you would use the word harp to describe that what <laughs> But the Princess Leia's theme, which we haven't heard since the first movie, played when we first saw her, and it was just even if you don't know it, you're transported back subconsciously to the 1977 movie, and oh boy, that was cool. And he didn't just do it with music, and they didn't just do it with sets, and they didn't just do it with costumes, but I think the the, the lighting, the the camera lenses. The angles and all that stuff, it was all a deliberate attempt to recreate the feel of the original Star Wars trilogy. And boy, I appreciated that. And it was also neat to see familiar faces. I mean, there could have been more, but to see Nine Numb, to see <laughs> Admiral Fudge and Akbar. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And I, I, I talked about this in the Journey Into episode, but they actually got the original puppeteer, Mike Quinn 
to be Nine Num again, and they got Tim Rose to be Admiral Akbar again. And why in the hell would you do that? <laughs> you would not. You, anybody could play those two parts, and yet they got the original guys to to be them again. And to me, that's that's going above and beyond. You know what I mean? Just trying to recapture magic, trying to honor these old films. To the point where you call these guys up and say, how would you like to work two days on this new movie <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so I love that. Like anytime you saw like a mouse droid or anytime you saw a gunk droid or, you know, something like something that was familiar, an alien species that we had seen before. Yeah. I, like I, at the very start, they have the attack on Jakku slash Jakku. I think they said it both ways. Yeah, they so do. So apparently it, it, it's proper either way. Um, but anyways, they had that attack and BB-8 escapes off into the sand and he goes over this ridge and then I swear, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I swear there was an, there was an alien hiding behind the ridge there and it was a hammerhead or a hammerhead. Do they have a name? You'd probably know that, wouldn't you? You know what hammerhead Yeah, uh, Ithorian. Is. Oh my gosh. Moma Nadon is what they call hammerhead now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's his new name. and Oh, that's like his name name. The character's name, and yeah. Hammerhead and is Ithorian just the... is his species, and Hammerhead is what the action figure was called. Right. Sorry, geek alert. <laughs> oh, in, in case you didn't know, I'm a giant, giant geek. <laughs> yep, and you just utterly proved that. Yeah, that's right. Well, hey, let's talk about sports again. All right, third caller. You're on the air. So, hey, <laughs> this deflate gate the shit. Cardinals and the... Wait, Cardinals is baseball. No, it's not. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's also football. Oh, damn you. Arizona Cardinals. Your mom is an Arizona Cardinal. Mm -hmm. uh, You're right. Crap, how did we get... Okay, How did you, you know mentioned... that? She is. She's actually the nose guard. <laughs> Wait, is nose guard a thing? <laughs> yes. Huh. <laughs> so it was right guard and left guard. Right guard is an antiperspirant, man. <laughs> what is a left guard? Uh, I, I, some kind of athletic supporter, I believe. Okay. It covers your You're genitals. really good at this. But, uh, okay, so uh, that's something that I really appreciated, that he really wanted to make it feel like Star Wars. Not, you know, we're going to cover new ground, and we're going to, you know, do something that they never could do. And you're like, oh, well, there was always a problem with the budget that I couldn't do what I wanted to do. It was like, no, we're going to pretend that we're making this movie then, or... You know, that we have the same resources now that they had then. Not, which isn't to say that there wasn't a buttload of CG. It because was there just, was. It, it was just not everything was yeah. CG. They actually had real... And, and, you know, this goes all the way back to when stuff first started leaking out of the on-set shooting stuff. Or I wouldn't say leaking out, but with J.J. Abrams, it's all controlled leaks. But they had the one really early on thing where J.J.'s standing there talking about something, and I want to say it was some charity thing he was doing a pitch for, and then one of the scavenger people from Jakku, from Jakku, Jakku. Stop it! Uh, they, yeah, they come walking out, and it's a person that walks right past him, and obviously they're not CGing this stupid little YouTube commercial. They had an actual person in an actual costume that came walking out. And I think that was, you know, yeah, it may have been a commercial for some charity, but this was also him saying, look, see, look what we do. This is a real person. That's a Muppet. See that Muppet? <laughs> that Muppet is moving. See that? <laughs> yeah, we put Muppets in here. <laughs> Come see it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like suddenly the Muppet is this, this super valuable thing that, whose time has passed. And he's like, yeah, we brought it out of retirement, biatch. Muppets. But yes. Looks like a Muppet, but he's wrinkly and green. That was exactly why he did that. And then he did another one where he's like, oh, you need to uh, give to this charity. And it's going to be really great. And he's standing in front of an X-Wing. Do you remember? And it was just so subtle. There he is. And he climbs up the thing. And there was a third one. Where he said, you know, hey, I just really want to address all these rumors that the Millennium Falcon is in this movie. The Millennium Falcon is not in this new movie, so please stop saying it. And it's right there where the chessboard is. Right. On the holographic chessboard on the Millennium Falcon. That kind of stuff was really cool, and it's kind of a shame that he's not doing the second one to see more of that crazy stuff. But uh, 
I, you know, he had a sense of humor. I really liked the way he did that. Yeah, what other things did you like about this film? I mean, it was nice. Uh, you were saying that you got to see Nine Num and Admiral Akbar again. But we got to see Han Solo and Chewbacca again. And we got to see Princess General Leia again. And... R2 and 3PO. Although R2, R2 and didn't 3PO do a great deal. in a way. We got to see... Let's see. We got to see Luke Skywalker for two or three shots. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that Luke counts. He yeah, had a well, beard. He did. He did have a beard. But he was, weirdly, he was wearing his trickster costume. I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> you know, I, gosh, I, uh, this is going to sound negative and it's not meant to be, but my cousin took his ch- children to see episode seven last week. And this is something we wouldn't have had in the original recording because, you know, it hadn't yet happened. But he had shown the trilogy to his kids right before he took them so that they would be all prepared. But she was not prepared for how old <laughs> these characters had become. And I guess she was just like, no, that's not Han Solo. What's wrong with his hair? And it's like, oh, no. And that kind of thing. What's wrong with his face? Only half of it works now. And she was upset by that because it was like, hey, this is a glimpse of mortality. You know, this is what <laughs> life does to a person. And then at the end, this creepy, skeletal, frightening old man turns around. And she's like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> And my cousin said, that's Luke Skywalker. And she said, no! (laughs) And I know it sounds like I'm making this story up, but he told me that, except for the who the F part, she was really, really upset by this. And she's like, no, he was so old and there was something wrong and no. And and he's like, well, honey, everybody gets old. All people, you one day will die. You know that, the puppy that we said went off to live on the farm? <laughs> and it was just, oh, it was just a, a moment she would never forget. When she finally learned about mortality. She learned about death through the Force Awakens. <laughs> Sorry, and you know, that that's probably should have all been cut out, but uh, that's why you guys tuned in, is to hear a horrible story like that. <laughs> but it was cool to see all those people again, you Except know? for Luke. It was great to see all they of those people. They were scraggly and old and creepy looking, and you know, the, the thing about... <laughs> 2000. Who was scraggly and old and creepy looking? All of them were. Han, Han was scraggly, but he was not old, old and creepy he's looking. He's not old? Come on. He's like 80. He's the only one that still looks like himself. That's possibly true. Oh, um, wait, Chewbacca still looks Yeah, Chewbacca same. didn't look it even. It's like he hasn't even. Not one hair has fallen Did out. Did that bother you? I, it didn't. It bothered me when we first saw the, the, the images. It was like, whoa, Chewie should have aged. But in seeing it in the movie, I was totally fine with it. It's yeah, like Chewbacca it didn't really is the same bother me. The only time when you could tell that there was age was when they replaced him with somebody else to like go upstairs or to duck down or do an action sequence where you could tell, oh, this isn't Peter Mayhew, this is somebody else because Mayhew's, you know, legs don't work anymore. Yeah, but how could Peter Mayhew be in it at all? Like that guy is... <laughs> Well, he had, like, knee replacement surgery, and so he can walk and all that, but he can't run and he can't jump and do all the things. They were doing, like, fundraisers to, like, save Peter Mayhew's life. He's within a a hair's breadth of death. Um, The one hair on Chewbacca's head that's going to (laughs) change from the original trilogy to this movie, that's how close he is to being (laughs) dead. How could he be acting in that? I don't understand, but... Well, when... (laughs) And not to talk about negative things, but when Phantom Menace came out... (laughs) That Yoda puppet was oh, an abomination. It was so much and worse than anything. And their reasoning was, well, you know, it's 30-something years in the past or whatever, however long that was. Of course Yoda would look different, which is so spurious, guys. When 900 years old you reach, 30 years mattereth not. <laughs> it should the have just been quote. the identical Yoda. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when... George did the Blu-ray. It is the identical Yoda. You know, he he removed that insidious puppet, and it, there's now a CG Yoda in the Phantom Menace that looks like the CG Yoda in the other two movies. Really? I guess it's a, a, an improvement. Things always for George Lucas. But uh, Chewbacca looking exactly the same, I think it's fine. It's, it's just shorthand. Hey, that's still Chewbacca with R two and three PO. They're costumes, you know what I mean? So they, it's, they can look identical. No time they, has passed. Yeah, they should be. I mean, they're Plus, just... there's that wonderful line where 3 Pius says, perhaps you didn't recognize me with my red arm, or whatever. And it's just like, oh my gosh. 
It's three bell. That's I so. I want to cool. see the prequel to this movie where the red arm, the adventure that brought about the red arm, is explained. Like R two and three PO are like running and doing stuff, and then his arm gets ripped off. He's like, "Hey, I need a new arm." And then they. That's going to be a good movie, and I'm sure that one's coming because there's going to be a new movie every year. R two, where, where did you get, get that red arm? <laughs> Mutilated. <laughs> Left for dead? Oh no, R2! Just don't tell anyone. And he puts it back on. And you can hear like the cries of the protocol droid saying, Someone help me! Help me! In the background. Okay, sorry. I went to a very dark place, guys. <laughs> this is the positive episode. Stop that. <laughs> I love 3 Feel. He didn't have a ton to do in this movie. Although compared to R2, whew. But, yeah, it was the same old 3PO. The star. The stuff that he did in episode two was just intolerable. And I, that C-3PO was not in this movie. I didn't find yeah, anything Yeah, that's a good PO thing. Maybe it, it almost annoying. feels like Jar Jar from episode two. You know, it's like everybody was so angry <laughs> about how bad Jar Jar was in episode one. that They're like, okay, well, Jar Jar's still here, but he's going to say this line here and then that line there and then he's done. And yeah, they're just making up for all the bad puns that 3PO did in episode two. By Okay, no, 3PO's just going to talk about his arm, and then he's done. Anyhow, I, that was another thing that I liked. Uh, you know, the familiarity and bringing back these people, I, I thought was pretty dang great. It was. What would you do to Chewbacca to make him look older? Give him a bunch of gray hair or what? I think I would. Yeah, I mean, I would just, there's a little bit of, of gray in there. Um, I wouldn't change the costume in any way except for just putting in some white here and there, like around the whiskers and on the chest or whatever. But uh, the fact that they didn't, it's fine. It's, just this, in his armpit. This looked like Chewbacca, whereas the one in Revenge of the Sith, was, which was supposed to be Chewbacca, yeah, okay, he's got the bandolier and they call him Chewbacca. Thanks, Yoda. But it didn't look as much like Chewbacca as this looked like Chewbacca. Do you know right. what I'm saying? yeah. So, so that's another positive. Something that I, I have wanted to talk to you about constantly is the John Williams score. And there's no way that can be a negative, so let's talk about that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sadly, I, uh, I'm sure there was lots of new music to it. Like you were saying the other day, like, oh my gosh, I just found myself whistling the, the race theme. theme. And I was just like, what the hell is the race theme? <laughs> of course, I've only seen it one time, so I can't be too upset but then you're like what you don't know the race theme you say you always whistle stuff john williams you lied um wait what did i say to you you said that you're you like always, you always say that every time you come out of a movie with john williams you're, you're able to the whistle music, the theme and I'm just like, yeah Dude, that's I, true you did say that i don't whistle everything there's just the ones that they play a lot I, I, and i was just like i can whistle the force theme you feel better jeez oh i'm the a-hole here <laughs> yes. is that what you're saying no yes. f you you only saw it once it's like you didn't see it at all <laughs> Stop your podcast and go watch it again. Okay, if you listen to Ray's theme by itself, you know, like on the soundtrack or whatever, and then go see the movie, you notice every time that song comes up again cool. and again and again. That's and again. something and I'd like to you do. You will appreciate that, I think. I and Kylo Ren has a theme mm -hmm. that's, not, I don't think, as memorable because it's, you know, just more of a imperial thing. Kind of like uh, in the first Star Wars where the, there was an imperial theme. Dun, 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 you know, kind of thing. Not the Darth Vader theme from Empire Strikes Back, but, you know, something like that that plays every time Kylo Ren shows up. Um, and so, yeah, there's, there's those two major themes. But then we revisit so many yeah, of the Yeah, that's old the ones. thing that I definitely noticed. I was, t I was talking to you before, and maybe even in the last thing, I'm not supposed to mention that, but <laughs> it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time is for a big movie that I know I'm going to see and I know I'm going to, uh, you know, be there within the first week or whatever. Usually with movie soundtracks, they'll release them a couple weeks ahead of the movie and you can buy it and you can listen to it for a while before you ever go and see the movie. And I've been meaning to do this with something that I know I'm gonna see. Get the soundtrack and listen to it ahead of time for a while, you know, listen to it like 15, 20 times in the two weeks before uh, I actually go and see the movie so that I can totally just be like, oh yeah, that's race theme. Oh, that's 
Kylo Ren, they didn't do that with this movie, unfortunately, I guess. No, it came out the day that the movie came out, and I think that was by design. But it, if I had a, a DeLorean that would go back in time, first, I would prevent 9-11. Second, I would knock up that girl that I liked in high school. And third, I would travel back and give you that soundtrack right before you left on your road trip and say, listen to this, listen yeah. the hell out of this during your nine-hour <laughs> drive. And... That would have been good. It would have been really cool, but... but um, Someday I'll get to that. The hard thing is... You don't have no money for listening to no music. Well, there's that. But also, I don't know... You, you don't know what movie's gonna have the mu music that's worth listening to. You know what I'm saying? Right, I mean, but John Williams this is one, a hint. <laughs> I knew would have been, but it didn't come out until later, and I wasn't able to get a hold of it. I actually meant to try and get a copy of it when it did come out and just put it in my like son's stocking or something because he would have thought that was rad but i just was never able to do it yeah i've seen the soundtrack once in all the times that i've gone to stores Isn't and that I, weird it well, but people don't buy cds yeah, anymore there is plus that. nobody buys non-pop music or rap CDs, you know what i mean but this kind of thing with the old i mean even with the stinking prequels I mean, shoot, with The Phantom Menace, they had a music video that was playing all the time on MTV. MTV, yeah. And they, each time they had a big song with each of those prequel movies that there was like, okay, this is, look, this is the one Across the Stars, listen to this one, we're going to play this. And you would hear it. Dude, I listened to it. Across the Stars probably 50 times before Episode 2 came out. Yeah. Over and, and, and over and over and over and over. And I would just put it on repeat and go to sleep. For my son's birthday, when Revenge of the Sith came out, I got him the Revenge of the Sith soundtrack. It had, like, the videos. And, yes, it came with the videos, and it was it was a really good soundtrack, and it had, again, another one of those, you know, they, it was track, I think, number two, where they just pulled it. It's actually the ending big fight between Anakin and uh, Obi-Wan, but they put it right there at the start. This is the song, and that was, like, the opening song in the videos where they'd done it to that music. I think it was called... Shoot, I want to say Duel of something, but it wasn't Duel of. It was... Was it Clash? Maybe that was it. Clash of the Heroes or... Shoot, I can't remember the title of it. But anyways, they didn't have that with this. Which I thought was weird because they totally could have. They totally Would it have been Ray's could... theme? Or would it have been... Oh, you don't know. Because you uh, ain't yeah, seen the movie know. but once, boy. And I, I, they totally could... The, when I got that soundtrack for my son for his birthday in 2005... There was just a big standee right there in the middle of Walmart with filled with CDs of the uh, Revenge of the Sith soundtrack. And they, I mean, even people that don't buy CDs, they'll buy the damn Star Wars soundtrack. You know what I'm saying? They will, if they see it, they'll be like, oh my gosh, yes. And they'll just get it. It's like the, the you know, when they put the gum right there next to the register and you, you, <laughs> it's you, an you weren't going to get it. it. But then yeah. you see it there and you're like, I totally want some gum. You know, it, that's what they would do. And well, it's a shame that they didn't do that was, here. I think it's and weird it's, that they didn't do it. You are a notorious cheapskate, and you haven't bought a <laughs> CD, let alone a movie soundtrack CD, in a monkey's age. But okay. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the first one that you broke down and is like, I'm going to buy this. Yeah, I would have. A, because it's Star Wars, and two, because it's special to do this. And, and, and yeah, I wish, again, knock up the girl, prevent 9-11 that I had traveled back in time and given you that, that CD because you, you would have enjoyed listening to it. And then when you go to the movie, it does make you go, oh, hey, I wondered about the context of this. That's really cool. Because there is a track, and it's called Snoke, that goes... <laughs> Only it's 100 men doing what I'm doing. <laughs> So, and so it's a didgeridoo? No, well, it's a... What do they call it's that? It's the with Tibetan the throat, throat, throat the, singing? The, yes. And, uh, you know, it's just dark, evil guys gargling. And uh, if you had listened to that whilst driving with your your children, A, your children would have been like, Turn it off, Daddy, turn I'm it off! I'm scared! I, I wish you had never given birth to me. I hate you! But also you'd been like, Whoa, what is the context for this? This is weird. And... Oh, I can't wait to see the movie to find out what this could possibly yeah, What the hell Snoke is? <laughs> Good point. That's the worst name ah, ever. We'll oh. li leave that for the second. Sorry, that, that's the next That episode. was the pin that I wanted us to <laughs> pin up. But yes, yeah, spoiler alert, terrible name. <laughs> Anyhow, John Williams is a fudge and national treasure. 
man. And I'm, I, I, I'm not exaggerating in any way. Holy cow. The day John Williams dies, a big chunk of music will die. This man He'll is... will have to write a new song about the day the music dies. Yes. But this man is more what makes Star Wars work than George Lucas or any of the actors. Yeah, it's funny. I, show, I made you watch this last week when we got together. There was one of those epic rap battles of history where it was Steven Spielberg versus Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock. And yeah, Alfred Hitchcock is like, you owe half your money to John Williams. Which I thought was pretty funny because it's true. Anyhow... Uh, I, I bitch about the prequels constantly, but I cannot bitch about the scores to the prequels. You know, Duel of the Fates is still singable, whistleable, or whatever, memorable yeah. all these years later. It's still and on my running playlist, even though, and I haven't run in months. <laughs> no, you, you know, it's a new year. You should make, <laughs> yeah, there we go. We'll you should make, make some, a, a we'll resolution to, make a new to, to do about that. that. And, and, and yeah, just, just once. Just, just once. Just try it out right in this new year. <laughs> uh, but anyhow... Uh, uh, yeah, Across the Stars, the love theme from episode two, still the absolute best thing in that whole movie. Just great, great music. I, uh, yeah, I can't, uh, I can't complain. I, I think it's really neat that he brings those scores back. And my favorite moment of the film, well, I love the part where Ray is trying to help Han fix, not trying. She is helping Han with the, the Falcon. I love that scene because they have kind of a neat chemistry and... And it is a sort of a father-daughter thing. And, and, and yeah, she fixes everything. And he's like, what, what did you do? Kind of thing, which I love. But moment, as far as the film goes, is that moment, musically, sorry, is that moment when Kylo Ren is trying to pull the lightsaber to him and it doesn't go to him. And you hear the Force theme, just like as big and bombastic as it has ever been. Oh my gosh, it's just so cool because that speaks volumes that was luke's theme when he was looking at the sunset that was the theme of you know luke you've turned off your targeting computer what's wrong you know that, that's that's the 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 music that plays at like the most heroic or emotional or whatever moments throughout the star wars trilogy and, and it comes back when she gets the lightsaber as though she's completing a, a loop of some kind of the circle is now complete kind of thing anyway before she was the learner and now she's the master well, yeah, somehow she's the master, even though I'm, I'm not sure that she, she was, was never ever a learner. learner. But <laughs> She just was born a master. We'll talk about that in the next episode. I guess we will. <laughs> but anyhow, it's just really magical. His music is really, really cool. And now that the movie's been out, you can find that music everywhere on YouTube. And something that they have changed on YouTube that they didn't used to do, but YouTube just plays now. I've had it on while I've been reading or whatever. I'll put on like Ray's theme or, you know, the main title. And it just plays through the whole dang soundtrack. As soon as that track yeah, is done, track it skips to the next one and plays that the and plays that and plays that. And I've fallen asleep and awakened and it's like 4.35 and it's still <laughs> so going boring. through. Like, you know, it's, we're 20 YouTube clips later, but it just doesn't let it stop anymore. It finds new stuff. And yeah, somebody you woke had uploaded up suddenly because now it's it's gone out of John Williams and gotten onto. Uh... Well, they they were playing the, the Turkish ripoff of Star Wars is what what had happened, and that woke me up. Oh, okay. Anyhow, I've I've really enjoyed listening to the score, and because you're a big score guy, I would hope that you would have enjoyed listening to it too. But uh, give it a try. I I, I would enjoy. One, uh, we were going to do a John Williams episode of Journey <sighs> into. Disillusions of we were going to do we a John Williams going, episode no. of Delusions of Grandeur. We did a John Williams episode of Delusions of Grandeur, and it and never the forces that wanted to destroy us made it not happen again. But that one was really about you know just like what an important man this was <laughs> is. I was speaking at the time in almost the past tense because they had just announced that. Spielberg's Bridge of Spies was going to be the first movie, well, since The Color Purple, that Williams did not score, and it was because of health reasons. And so I was terrified. I was like, oh, no. He's, he's going he's gonna to die soon. We, guys, we've got to get together and do a John Williams episode. And so we did. We recorded that. And the whole time I'm thinking, because of health reasons, guys, oh, no, kind of thing. And so uh, we did that 
episode. And here he is, you know, half a year later or whatever, still alive. So um, maybe it's good that so that he's, episode never He's going to live forever. Yes, I, I sure hope so. So we don't... He's going to be like as, Stan Lee. As long as we don't put out that episode about him possibly dying, then it will never happen. Okay, deal. It's our fault if he dies because we put out his episode. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that is, the, I mean, obviously, anytime you go to see a movie scored by John Williams, it's going to be good. It's one. It's going to be one of the positives. We've been going for a while on positives. Do you think we should cut it off and then we can go and do the negative episode slash sum up episode where we can talk even positives again if we want? To yeah, yeah let's do that because uh, I, there's still one more positive that I wanted to talk oh, okay. about. And let's just leave it to the next episode. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll do that. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. This is part two of the Star Wars Force Awakens. That gets my goat extravaganza. Yes, but don't push stop. I'm not going to. Hey, I want to remind everybody to please donate to the show. We're using Big's recorder, and we've got these little microphones attached to our lapels, although mine's not attached because the thing has broken off. It would be nice if we could just record and trust... (laughs) That it's going to work fine. That we're all going to be all right. That we'll, the sound will be crystal clear and we can put it out. And that it is actually recording. And if we got some donations and got new equipment, I think we could trust it a little more, at least until the next time we forget to hit record. Yeah, so please donate. Yeah, We're, we're just looking for funds to be able to replace uh, our two Zoom recorders. They're not expensive, so it won't take a lot. So, you know, just chuck a couple of bucks our way and that would be really awesome yeah if every single one of the listeners of that gets my goat donated a thousand (laughs) dollars we would be able to buy another zoom mic for him (laughs) and me because there are three of you and one of you is justin charles and he's like well i I have no money so i will edit for you and we're like okay that's good anyway sorry (laughs) So yeah, please donate if you can. We're we're gonna keep bugging you about it until you do. So you might as well. And yeah, if you want us not to bug you, then donate because then we'll stop. We'll be like, oh gosh, I feel guilty because some guy donated seven dollars last week. So I guess we shouldn't ask anymore. Yeah, we need to stop. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you uh, again shortly. We'll be back with another episode. Okay, may the force awaken you tonight. always always yes <laughs> that gets my goat is produced under the creative commons non-commercial no deliverance license but you have my permission to steal it <laughs> <laughs>